Welcome everyone, it's Safe Dragon Mart. It's time for some more Raid Shadow Legends. Uh, what do I want in this? Well, at any rate, we're definitely going to need some... I'm going to try this mixture. If this doesn't work, I have other things I can do. Um... Well, you both know what I'm probably going to do with that. Because I don't need that Farrakhan overtaking my own Farrakhan. That's just stupid. That is what we call very stupid. Try to do some Cyrodiil tonight. That just... That didn't end well. Let's just put it that way. I had some progress, but really... I'm not... Entirely like... I'm, I'm okay that I didn't film it. I'm gonna be honest. I'm kind of okay with it. Oh yeah, and I don't want their deacon getting going. Because that would um, be what we like to call awful. Okay. Okay. Okay, then. This is bad. I would like to call bad. Um, These waves are, um... Much stress. Hard to keep anyone alive in this scenario. Knowing how slow it is to kill a Pixneal, we might as we may very well end up reviving Farrakhan, but we'll see. There's a reason I'm doing that.
Yeah, I probably needed armature, to be honest. I probably needed armature, because I don't see how we win this after that. I just don't see it happening. Yep. Yeah, we needed armature. That's what we needed. Probably. Yeah, floor 99 is, um... Let's just say it's not messing around. Ugh. Let's just say that. Because the problem with Farrakhan is always good in a short situation. He's not good for like multiple waves and certainly not versus revivers too much if there's a lot of them. You best want someone who can block revive. So if you don't have that... See, that's where Phoenix comes in. That's why I want to max Phoenix. Because Phoenix is going to allow me to block revive on basically no cooldown. Which is incredibly useful versus certain revivers. Because certain revivers are really obnoxious. Because if you if you have revivers, it's very late for me, but because tomorrow I have to investigate other things. Fun. Doesn't help that the only target within block revive range was under Perfect Veil, if that. Because block revive range is lower than you think it is. Because of the nature of these mobs. Basically, at this point, uh, 
I have to slow revive piece by piece. Okay, it is clear, one thing is clear, we need stuff to deal with a lot of things. Because they definitely need damage mitigation. That's for sure. Because it seems abundantly clear that we need it. Because this stage is a genuine nightmare. Once we have a Vogoth, we're just going to have to abuse the fact we have one, because at this point, I don't have another answer. Because without that, I don't see how we're going to have enough passive healing to deal with this. I really don't. I need something to cushion the blows of all of these crazies. So yeah, um, I know this is a bit wimpy for me to go, like, this little spirit affinity, but remember where we are, right? We are in a place where... There was a lot of evil creatures like these Cupiduses. Because of that, I need something something that deals with the damage without buffs, possibly. Because Miss Ray here removes a lot of these buffs. So, relying on buffs against a ray is almost a foolhardy ambition. Vogoth also defends against the number one most serious source of damage from champions, is AoE. Like, all the AoE hits, it takes them and soaks them up. The area of effect hits, like that, 
just soaks them. You need that in order to stand a chance, to be honest. You need something to soak that damage up. Ally, individual ally protect is probably not enough. Because what you got to remember is... Is, uh... The ally, like the... I could put more revivers, etc., but anyway. So we have made it all the way into hell on earth. Thankfully, Vogoth is going to help with this matter. The reason we're all dogpiling her, as I know, that if we get rid of her, specifically this duchess, we will be able to win straight up. But, in order to do this, we are going to have to have to get her low enough to potentially do it. Okay, that's good enough. I just I had to get her low enough to either block revive or else do something else with the Duchess. Because until we shut the Duchess down, I don't see how I win. That's the thing. Until that Duchess dies... Their team is immortal, functionally. Now that the Duchess is dead, we can revive whoever we like. Because as long as she's down, whoever goes down on their team stays down. And that's the important thing. You want to identify the Reviver and shut them down. Because otherwise we're never reaching the, the Scarab King. That's just the bitter fact. We're not... We're not going to reach Scarab 3, which, by the way, is absolute terror. We're not reaching Scarab 3 without some very serious stuff. Doesn't help that they keep transferring. Man, that's tanky. And it regions on top. Aha. That didn't even... If that isn't tanky, that didn't even block revive. That sliver did not even 
Block revive. Finally. And here we are. We have come all the way around. Floor 100. Scarab. We'll try this recipe. There's other recipes we can pick from. But as it appears, we do still need armature. Why? I need something to deal with these vermin. Because the problem is, if you don't have something to deal with these duchess we are in for a world of pain Gotta block revive them. Only way. Because like I said, if that Duchess lives, we're not making it past this boss. So, this boss, the almighty Floor 100 Scarab, this boss is an absolute nuisance. The scarab most evil. Part of what makes this scarab tough is the fact that it's this it it has so much dumb stuff in it like true there's a number of ways to beat it This is a boss so heinous that you want, like, I'm wondering if but then again, also, because this is the other version of Scarab, I don't know if Rector's as good of a choice as normal. It's like breaking this spectral horror, man, is just... Like, it's called a spectral horror for a reason. Because breaking it... 
is a nightmare. I may just end up doing the, the Virgus solo classic. Yep, the Virgus solo classic. It's all come back to this. Me and the Scarab. And his stupid vile absorption. It's like you need very specific amounts of shields to deal with them. And damage mitigation. As he goes... Berserk with the vile absorption. So you have to like have chance they can abuse his mechanic. Decreasing that max health. Because you want to break that that barrier shield. You just do. So without it, you'll be stuck here a very long time. I think the main key here is to try to puncture that bar up there. And then by puncturing it, we do extra damage. Torture by insects. <laughs> the most evil scarab. If we can beat this, that'll be great. Sounds easy. It's not. Why isn't it easy? Because this boss is dumb. And is very reactable with very specific strategies. I mean, I could make another team comp, but if this works, I'm not going to fix it right this second. I could show other techniques, but this isn't the hardest part of this dungeon. The hardest part... is between here and the griffin. Because once you, like, because there's Mashald on the way and the Mashald massively mess you up. And there you have it. 
Floor 100 Scarab. It's back and forth, just trying to crack his spectral horror. Next time, we're going to go all the way up here. This would be Griffin. And that is Dark Fae. As maniacal as that is. Yes. That's Dark Fae.